hello and welcome to another tutorial from slow academy uh today is gonna be a quick one uh we want to look at a uh, multi-track recording how to record a multi-track on fl studio 21 before i dive in i would like you to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so that you get notified whenever we drop useful and educative content like this give this video a thumb up and don't forget to come back for more tutorial videos fl studio introduced so many cool features in the latest version fruity loops 21 which makes fruity loops now competing with uh, different digital audio workstations out there multi-tracking on fl studio gets much easier on fruity loops 21 all you need to do is click on the plus sign on the playlist top left corner and select add audio track you can also add multiple audio tracks by right clicking on the same plus sign as many audio tracks as you want for now i'll be adding four what you notice is that as soon as you add all these tracks it's going to automatically assign each of the tracks to respective tracks on the mixer which means track one goes to track one on the mixer track three on the playlist go to track three on the mixer and so on so when i select track one i automatically get track one selected on the mixer now pay attention to the three icons that comes up on each of the tracks that you have inserted the first icon represents the audio input source the next icon represents the monitoring and the last icon represents arm recording. The first icon is what you use to select where the signal is coming from. Simply click on this and select the mic input on your interface where the first signal is coming from. This depends on the type of audio interface you are using and the number of channels available depends on the number of inputs available on your audio interface. For now, I'll be linking the first audio to the first input on my interface. I will link up the second track to the second input on my interface. And I will link up the third to the third input on my interface and the fourth to the fourth input on my interface. Now I have different signals coming on each of these tracks. I might have four vocalists ready to run a backup track. So I can record them separately at a go on my project. To test the signal coming into track 1, you make use of the monitoring icon. And you can decide how you want to monitor this signal. External input only, this is going to bypass or disregard any effect you have inserted on the first insert here. For example, we are adding a reverb. So, when external input only is selected, the feedback you are hearing from this monitoring is going to be unprocessed, which means the reverb will be bypassed. External and mixer input, we combine both signals. This means you are listening to both your raw sound and the effect that you have added on that same channel post effect you are listening to the processed sound which means the sound you are monitoring has passed through the insert passing through the effect you have inserted on the effect slot the post eq is going to be giving you the feedback after passing the signal through the eq here post level and panning is going to be including the panning and the fader level 
and post track is going to be giving you the full process feedback. You can decide to turn this off or turn it on or automatically monitor your sound whenever you have harmed the track. So let's switch off all the monitoring. And most importantly, make sure that all the arm recording is on so that you get signal coming into these four tracks. Okay. Now you are ready to record on these four tracks, getting signal from different inputs and recording them at a go. All you need to do is press the record button. Now let's quickly talk about the recording options. When you right click on the record button, you must make sure that the audio is checked as no audio will be recorded on your track. And these are the options you should also consider. Recording starts playback, which means whenever you click on the record button, then the playback also starts. When this is deselected, you have to click on the record button and click on the play button to start recording. So if you want this record button to function as both, you have to activate recording starts playback so that as soon as you hit the record button, the recording will start. The sound on stop, it means that when you start to record and you click on the stop button, the record button will be disarmed. You can also enable recording markers to take note of wherever you are starting the recording and stopping the recording so when all these are properly set you are good to go so all we need to do is hit the record button and your recording starts but just before i click on the record button because this project is empty i will have to select by right clicking and uh, selecting a range where I want the recording to cover. If this is not done, recording will not pass one bar. We always circulate through one bar. But because of this selection, the recording can go until it gets to the uh, end of the selection range. Now let's go ahead and record. Okay. So if signals are coming in from uh, these channels, the audios will start coming in into your projects. Thank you for staying tuned to the end of the lecture. I believe we have great time learning today. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that whenever we drop a video like this, you will always get notified. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial.